Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we're going to be talking about how to select distinct values out of your MySQL database table. Uh, so normally when you're doing select, you're going in and you're selecting and anything that matches uh, what you've requested is going to pop up. One of the problems you can run into though, is what about if you just want to see what unique information or what unique values are possibly in your table? Uh, so let's say you have some type of logging system. So the logging system is going to have a timestamp, it's going to have pass-fail values, uh, and then it's going to have something like user account information or computer account information. What if all you want to see is what user accounts simply show up within that table or what computer accounts simply show up within that table, and then based off of that, you want to do something else? Uh, topically, where this comes up for me is I'm creating a project right now with Arduino Unos with Wi-Fi, and so basically I'm creating a sensor project where I have a bunch of these uh, different Arduinos that are communicating back to a MySQL database server. Uh, and then again, they're, they're inputting a timestamp, they're inputting uh, some sensor information, so on and so forth. But one of the things that they're doing is uh, the values that they're inputting into that table is they're also inputting their MAC address, right? So basically every time I connect one of these Arduinos into this new little infrastructure that I'm building, they will start communicating back with a MySQL uh, database server. Uh, and then they'll put the timestamp, they'll put whatever sensor value there is, and then they will put their MAC address address as basically a unique identifier. Well, in this particular system, one of the things that I want to be able to do is I want to simply be able to see what MAC addresses are communicating with my MySQL uh, server. So essentially, uh, with the code that I've created, um, I can upload that code onto any number of Arduinos, uh, and then I can connect them to the infrastructure, and they'll just automatically start communicating back with the MySQL uh, database server. Uh, the problem there is that I may have one of these devices communicating, or I may have 50 of these devices communicating uh, and so one of the things that I may need in my code is be, to be able to simply see each unique uh, device that's communicating with the server uh, and then be able to, to run some other SQL statements based off of that. And so in the project that I'm doing, one of the things that I need to be able to do is I just simply need to see, you know, what are the unique the unique MAC addresses that are showing up in that MySQL database uh, table. And so one of the things that I can do is I can say select distinct, right? So normally uh, when we do, we select, we say select, let's say MAC address. So for this, it's select MAC address, select MAC address from uh, table, this is the temperature table. Uh, and then basically what'll happen is it'll just give you all all the MAC addresses basically whenever whenever they show up. And so you may get thousands and thousands and thousands of records that are gonna show up on your screen and that's not necessarily gonna be useful. So one of the things you can do is you can say select distinct MAC address or whatever uh, column you're looking for and then it will only show uh, the, the, every time it shows up once. So basically, if I have three of these Arduinos communicating with the MySQL database server uh, to that particular table, it will only show three MAC addresses. So once I have those three MAC addresses, then I can do something else if I see fit. Uh, this will probably make a little bit more sense when we go over to the demonstration. So let's go over to the server. I will show you how this distinct works and why it's so useful. So here we are back at my MySQL database server. Again, I'm running uh, Ubuntu 18.04 LTS with the graphical user interface. Uh, but what I'm showing you today is a basic uh, SQL statement. So it should run on any uh, SQL server, my, my SQL server that you're dealing with. Uh, so on this server, I have a really nasty uh, table right now. So I have a table called temp and that temp uh, table is having data inputted to it every three seconds by three uh, different Arduino Unos with Wi-Fi. So I have three Arduinos that every three seconds are communicating back to the server and updating with what their current temperature uh, sensor is, uh, sensor data is. So we have a pretty nasty table here. If we take a look at it, we can do select uh, all from temp. So we're just going to select all the records from temp 
and then we're going to hit enter and we can see simply to process this it's going to take a little bit of time here right so we currently have this is the uh, the id number so we have 322,242 uh, records at this point uh, this is the temp values here uh, this is a basic timestamp here and this is where we have the individual uh, mac addresses and so for me one of the things uh, i want to be able to do is actually for a php script i want to be able to pull out the individual mac addresses uh, and then run Run some if-else statements and some loops based off of those individual MAC addresses. So when I'm taking a look at this, this isn't that useful. Now, if I do something such as select uh, MAC address uh, from temp, uh, then I'm basically just gonna get this. And again, uh, this is one of those things where I could use a PHP script. So I could use another, let's say a back end programming language to parse what comes out here uh, and then basically try to figure out what the unique MAC addresses are. But one of the cool things is within MySQL itself, you can do that. So instead of doing select MAC address, what I can do is I can do so select and then I can say distinct. So basically I'm gonna say select distinct MAC address from temp right and so basically all i'm doing here is i'm doing the normal select then i'm saying distinct so what i want is unique so i whatever unique values that's what i'm interested in uh, from the mac address column and then we hit enter it'll take a second to go but now we can see that we have these three unique mac addresses within that table of 322,000 records so now again if you're using another back-end programming language php python ruby or whatever else you can pull just these values out and then you can you can use the, the rest of your code to to interact with these values as you see fit um, and so that's why the select distinct is such a valuable thing it's because again if you if if you don't know how many user accounts you have if you're not sure how many Arduino devices or how many are IOT devices you have uh, communicating with a particular table this is a way you can just pull out the unique values um, and then past that you can do as you see fit so there you go. Now you know how to pull out unique or distinct values out of your MySQL database tables. Again, for me, uh, this is very valuable because I'm going to have any number of these Arduino devices all communicating with that MySQL database table. And for the additional code that I'm going to be writing in PHP, I need to be able to pull out the MAC addresses for the individual uh, Arduinos that are communicating with the server. And then I will have uh, additional code to do something based off of those MAC addresses. And so this is a very simple way that you can pull out, again, any kind of unique information. So again, let's say you have a log file. So you have a log file and you just wanna see, you know, the unique user accounts that are in the log file or the, the unique computer accounts that are in the log file. This is a way that that can show up. And then based off of that, you can create additional code to do something off of, of what comes up there. So this is just one of those nice, useful little tools uh, that is built into MySQL. And this is also one of the things that you need to be thinking about uh, whenever you go about coding your project. Remember, uh, as I say, there, there's about 15 ways to, to skin a cat uh, if you want to. In the coding world, uh, many times when you're trying to accomplish a task, there are numerous different ways you can accomplish a task. Again, with pulling out the unique information here, I could actually pull out all the values. I could do select MAC address from uh, the temp table and then I could have PHP then parse all the values that come out and then determine which ones are unique and dump that into something like an array. That is one way I could get the unique values out of the MySQL database table. But one of the things that you'll find in the technology world is if you have components like this, uh, services like this already built in to the application or the server you're dealing with, most of the time it's actually far more efficient uh, based off of resources and all of that to actually have something like this server be able to process this information on its own. So that's one of the things that you do need to be thinking about whenever you deal with MySQL is you may have an idea like, okay, I need to get the unique values or I need to do X, Y, or Z. One of the questions you should ask yourself, is it better Is it better to have your code, your backend code, your PHP, your Ruby, your Python, your whatever, uh, do that? Or is it better to actually have the, the, the database server itself do it? Something that you need to be thinking about with resource allocation and resource utilization, all of that type of thing. So as always, uh, I enjoy teaching this class. I look forward to seeing you at the next one.
If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.